Hello, uh, I'm Dr. Heidari, specialist dermatologist uh, working in Dubai. Uh, I've been working in dermatology field since 2000 uh, until now. Uh, our topic uh, is going to be uh, general aspects of skin cancer diagnosis and treatment. And after that, we will explain basal cell carcinoma and we will go through the diagnosis, treatment and clinical subtypes of this condition. As you know, uh, skin cancer is uh, happening because of uh, uncontrolled proliferation of any type of skin cells. It could happen um, because of proliferation of uh, melanocytes or non-melanocytic uh, skin cells. So, according to the skin uh, cells that are in, in the skin type that are involved, cells that are involved, we can categorize the type of malignancy. Nowadays they consider any type of skin cancer apart from melanoma as uh, non-melanoma skin cancer. It could uh, be categorized further um, into basal cell carcinoma which is from basal cells of the epidermis. Then we have squamous cell carcinoma which originates from the suprapasal uh, layer of the skin, spinous layer, and then we have malignant melanoma, which is specifically discussed later in another uh, session. Another classification that we can consider for uh, skin malignancy or skin cancer is to uh, classify into two groups superficial type of skin malignancy or deep type of skin malignancy. Um, as long as the malignant cells are limited to the epithelial uh, surface or epidermis, we can categorize them as superficial type of malignancy. But if they invade the basal, um, basal uh, membrane, uh, then we, we will um, have the, the type that is deeper, deep type of skin or invasive type of skin cancer. The other name that uh, usually or commonly is used for description to describe superficial type of skin malignancies as in situ or in situ uh, type of uh, malignancies. So it includes superficial basal cell carcinoma, bowel disease, and actinic keratosis, and melanoma in situ. Um, next, uh, we'll focus on the risk factors or, or actually the factors that predispose the person to develop skin malignancy. Um, and in that uh, topic, mostly um, we will focus on most common risk factors that may predispose the person to develop a type of malignant skin tumor. However, there are many other um, syndromic conditions that are very rare but can predispose the person to develop skin malignancy. First of all, age of the patient is important. Um, malignant tumors generally tends to happen mostly in 
older adult people and with age, the possibility of having a skin malignancy becomes more. The second risk factor is the amount of melanin that uh, that particular person has in his skin or her skin. And according to the density of the melan melanin or melanocytes in the skin, we have a classification from type 1 to type 6 and this classification is called Fitzpatrick skin type classification with um, skin type 1 is the lightest or the least, least um, uh, pigmented type of skin and type uh, 6 is the heaviest uh, type of uh, skin color or darkest skin color so if the skin is lighter I mean the skin type 1 skin type 2 and skin type 3 generally are more um, uh, vulnerable to develop uh, skin malignancy then we have personal and family history of any skin malignancy that is very important especially for malignant melanoma and on top of all of these factors there is uh, environmental factor the first one is exposure to UV or ultraviolet light as the most important environmental factor and can affect uh, uh, the chance of developing skin malignancy. Which type of UV is that? Usually UVB is uh, important then UVA also but UVA mostly is involved with the skin aging but for malignant uh, diseases, for malignant tumors of the skin, UVB is most important. Smoking is another factor that can predispose people to develop squamous cell carcinoma specifically. And then some type of viral infections, and namely uh, HPV infection, or human papillomavirus infection uh, that um, is very common uh, in adult uh, people and is a very important risk factor for uh, epithelial type of squamous cell carcinoma. Then we have uh, immune deficiency conditions or immune suppression. There are some uh, situations that patient may become immune depressed because of different medications that, she, that the that person receives, uh, mostly uh, azathioprine, then uh, cyclosporine. These type of medications mostly are prescribed for the people with um, um, solid organ transplants. Then we have HIV infection that also uh, causes uh, immune suppression. And uh, ionizing radiation. Radiation is a very important factor as well in some people. For example, uh, decades ago, very uh, long time before, it was very common practice to use the X-ray X radiation to treat the tinea cavities or fungal infection of the of the head. But now this type of treatment has been uh, abandoned. Then exposure to different chemical materials, arsenic and tar, are the um, 
uh, most important uh, or most uh, mostly related to this type of uh, malignancies, specifically uh, basal cell carcinoma, squamous cell carcinoma. Then we have uh, the scar conditions, cicatricial conditions. For example, any chronic uh, wound, any chronic um, condition of the skin that can cause fibrosis. Um, um, this situation can um, finally uh, end with uh, scar muscle carcinoma, development of scar muscle carcinoma. For example, we have uh, like uh, we have uh, some conditions like chronic cutaneous tuberculosis and, and then lupus erythematosus these two conditions are very chronic and um, during the course of the, um, of the disease patient may develop, might develop um, fibrosis and sclerosis in the skin and finally there is a possibility of having a scum sarcastinol. Uh, genetic conditions that we spoke about, I mentioned earlier, um, can be um, can be um, considered as a syndromic uh, situation, like albinism, basal cell carcinoma syndrome, Buzik syndrome, Cowden syndrome, Bloom syndrome. Discratosis congenita, epidermolysis bullosa, epidermodysplasia versiformis, and finally um, FAMM syndrome, which is um, related mostly with malignant melanoma.